Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. I am Miranda Procco from Owl Ridge Homestead. And today I'm going to do uh, part of a presentation that I, um, I usually do here at our small farm um, in the spring, sometimes fall. Uh, it, with a, it goes along with a tour that I have of our place. Um, and it's uh, the talk and tour is on soil health, soil biology, um, and the soil food web. So I figured because of, of our circumstances now and the fact that I couldn't have um, my spring uh, program here, I decided to take it online and do a class for you uh, here. Um, so you can see me and you can see um, my PowerPoint that I have for you. And um, I get lots and lots of messages um, uh, throughout the uh, years that I've been um, studying the soil food web of people, I'll mention it and people will say, well, what is the soil food web? What, what, are, you, what are you talking about when you actually talk about mention the soil food web. So to sort of address that to everybody, I figured I would just do this video and go through um, <clears throat> uh, this uh, um, presentation that I put together. So I'll have it on file and I'll have it at the tip of my fingers to just hand to people when they, when they um, ask about it. Um, or uh, you can, um, it'll be on my Facebook page to view. So what I'm going to do today is do the first part. I'm dividing this PowerPoint, this presentation into three parts. And the first part is going to be today, and it's going to be about the soil food web and the components of the soil food web and how those components work together. Um, and we're, we're just going to talk about that a little bit. And then the second part of the presentation, which I'm going to do uh, probably record tomorrow or another day, um, is going to be about my, the actual microorganisms and identifying them and um, looking at their morphology. And that's going to be, I'm going to do a lot with uh, microscopy work for that second uh, part of the presentation. Um, so that's gonna be fun. You're gonna see a lot of sl uh, uh, slides uh, showing different mi microorganisms that you see would see in your soil under the microscope. And then the l lastly, the last part of, uh, uh, of the talk is going to be um, sort of how do we, how do we deal with the problems that we're facing today with soil, soil degradation, chemical farming, the destructive uh, practices of chemical farming on soil um, and our environment, and this destructive behavior that has become the norm in our, our country um, and around the world in some places, but mostly our country, um, with farming large scale, small scale farming, gardening. Um, and we're just gonna talk a little bit about how we can accomplish change on a small scale and large scale, and how we can sort of reshape the way that we think of our food production, how we produce food, whether it's in our backyard, whether it's on our countertop, or whether it's on a small farm, large farm, uh, uh, big ag, these things can carry over and change uh, change uh, the way we do things across the board. So uh, a little bit about myself, uh, a little introduction on why I'm doing this, why I'm here, um, why I like to talk about the soil food web. Um, I've been growing food. Uh, I've uh, worked for um, small production farms, um, sometimes as a volunteer, um, and I've been growing food on my own uh, for uh, over 10 years now. Um, I watched my uh, father uh, tend, uh, plant, to, plant and tend a garden when I was a little girl, um, and I have to tell you, there's nothing better than fresh produce from 
your backyard. I think you all probably know that. <laughs> so when um, so when my father's produce wasn't available anymore, and I moved out, and I went to go buy some of this, uh, some a tomato or whatever at a store, a grocery store, and I went home and ate it. I said, "This isn't a tomato," <laughs> because it just it didn't it lacked t uh, taste, uh, um, and it it just wasn't appealing. Um, and so that really was an eye opener for me. And I just started to go down this road of why grocery, st some grocery store foods or what they get for, uh, from larger, large scale, uh, food production tastes so different. And what's, what's happening, what's going on. Um, and so from, for, from there, I, um, we moved here and, um, started growing food and sort of made the same mistakes that a lot of other people have made with uh, following advice from your local um, garden store. Um, they like to push a lot of chemicals and uh, push a lot of things that they have been sort of told to sell people and that they're harm these, these uh, chemicals and um, products are harmless. But I, I've seen firsthand how they are very harmful and um, changing my ways and learning more and educating myself and becoming certified in soil biology, soil, the soil food web, um, compost, compost teas um, and soil microscopy um, through a program I'm going to mention in a minute. Um, I've learned a tremendous amount and. Um, I don't think I, you know, I never looked back after that. So um, I've seen the results. So not only have I done the research and educated myself on the topic, but uh, I've experienced the differences, the changes um, that have been made here at our place and with people that I've, um, clients of mine that I've cons uh, consulted with um, when I go to people's homes and I help them change the way that they grow food. Um, we've seen, see, I've seen the results with them too. So it's been really rewarding and really fun. And I sort of hope we're on the, a path of healing um, for our entire planet. Uh, that's my hope. So um, going on to uh, this PowerPoint, I really can't take much of this information. Uh, I, I can't take the credit for it. Um, it is the uh, extraordinary work of soil biologist Elaine Ingham, Dr. Elaine Ingham, uh, and she really pi is pioneering. Um, she has been a pioneer of soil mi uh, microbiology for many, many years now. She's world renowned. Uh, she is the actual. She's the founder of Soil Food Web, and that is the company that I took. Uh, the business uh, that I took my courses, my certification courses with, I earned a scholarship to take these courses. So I was really, really grateful for that. And um, it took me a couple seasons to finish the entire program, but I took classes in uh, soil biology, soil life in the soil, the nutrient cycle, um, compost, compost teas how to brew compost teas, um, how to make correct compost, um, and soil microscopy, which was one of my favorites, which is looking under the microscope at the microorganisms that are in your soil or not in your soil. Um, that was a favorite of mine. So we're going to, this entire PowerPoint's sort of going to be an overview of those classes I took, uh, minus the compost and compost teas. We'll talk a little bit about that, but really, there's really not enough time to go through all of it. So this is pretty much about the soil food web. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that, but getting back to Elaine, so she started um, the soil food web company, but before that she, and here it says it right here on the first slide, uh, she graduated from St. Olaf College. She double majored in biology and chemistry. She got her master's um, in marine biology and microbiology. So she kind of went from water to soil which is kind of neat. Um, and she talks about that a lot, her uh, experience with that. Uh, she got her PhD at Colorado, Colorado State University in soil microbiology uh, and was an assistant associate professor at Oregon State University. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky and, sl and dicey for 
uh, Dr. Ingham because this around this time in 1986, in the late 80s, early 90s, we started the way we grow food in big ag sort of started changing, and companies like Monsanto started to take a foothold, and and big ag started to really unfold, and Elaine. Uh, was doing a lot of research on GMOs that had been introduced around that time. And she was very skeptical, skeptical, skeptical of genetically modified organisms. And so she was doing some really important research on them. And she, she was finding out some very uh, negative things about GMOs. And so she, um, uh, Oregon State University actually halted her research they um really got in her way uh while she was trying to research these these or uh the gmos and uh they put many many roadblocks in her way but she still stayed she still kept going anyway and um she took a very vocal stand questioning gmos um she argued for more research which they didn't want to do and it turns out Oregon State um, decided to go with the uh, millions and millions of dollars of donated money from Monsanto to continue creating GMOs and to stop talking negative, negatively about them. And that was Elaine. So they decided to let her go uh, from the company in, in 2001. So she left and she's never looked back because she then formed Soil Food Web. And she's doing her own research now um, and, well, before that as well, and um, is really spreading the word now about uh, the truth. So that's a little bit of a back background uh, on Elaine. So anything in this uh, PowerPoint, I really can't take credit for because it is uh, Dr. Elaine's uh, uh, research, all of her research and hard work. Um, so let's go on to the next slide let's see where are we okay i'm gonna try to be good at this technology stuff okay Boop. okay so let's start out with what is soil and this is really important because in the soil biology world there is a huge difference between dirt and soil so if you call soil dirt or you call dirt soil you it's a no-no <laughs> this is very, very important, and this is a very, very, very important concept to understand. So what is soil? Soil is, it's composed of the following. Mineral solids, sand, silt, and clay is the parent material that you're working with, that you're going to be building upon, and it's extremely important. Um, you're also going to get nu nutrients from sand, silt, and clay. Water is the main source. Main source of water for plants um, is in soil, and it contains dissolved nutrients. Air provides roots with oxygen and helps remove excess carbon dioxide from respiring root cells. Um, so when you have real soil, uh, you're going to have these beautiful air pockets within the soil itself, and it's going to cause the soil to be very aerobic, and you want your soil to be aerobic. It needs air flow. It, it absolutely does. When I talk about don't not letting your soil or your compost become anaerobic, that means without oxygen. And that's something that you don't want at all. We're going to get into that a little bit more. Uh, we, uh, soil is also uh, composed of organic matter, lots of different types of organic matter. We have, uh, well, first it's composed of living organisms. So those are our microorganisms we're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, fresh resi residues, dead, and well-decomposed de residues, very dead. So that's just decomposing plants and animals. So you have your life, in, your life things that are alive and things that are dead. <laughs> you can really just uh, divide it that way, but that's a good way of saying it. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> So the soil food web is really an actual biome. It's, it's considered a biome, the soil biome. And it's, at, it's hard at work. 
Uh, soil is a complex underworld and interdependent web of microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, and microarthropods. That's just to name a few because there are so many, so many organisms that we still can, we don't know what they are. We can't identify them and we don't know what they do. So what, we, what we're talking about when we actually are to show you things that we know, like types of bacteria, fun, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, those are things that we know, but you have to understand there's so many things that we still don't know. Nobody does, um, which is very important to understand. Um, virtually all, this is very important, virtually all soils in the world contain all the nutrients that plants need. So therefore, fertilizer, organic or non or inorganic or synthetic, is totally unnecessary. Okay, microorganisms are what solubilize all nutrients to become plant available. So you're going to hear me throughout this uh, PowerPoint talk about plant available nutrients all the time because the soil food web is the only system that can cycle nutrients that's going to become available to the plant, okay, um, in, in a correct way, in the right balance, okay? So here we have pictures of these dense forests, okay? They're growing fungi and they're growing plants and the abundance of understory and overstory and um, just the lush growth. You don't see anyone going in there in a full PPE suit, okay, spraying pesticides, spraying inorganic chemicals, spraying fungicides, anything with a side, it's fungicides, herbicides, uh, anywhere near these natural areas, correct? We all know that. So why are they growing so well? Why are they so abundant? They're growing trees for crying out loud. <laughs> um, they are not missing a beat here because it's been undisturbed and that the soil food web is intact and it's healthy. So we have to think of that first and foremost. Look out your window and look at, this, look at, look at the forests around you or prairies or natural areas that have grown in a natural way. They, they don't need anything to grow. They don't need synthetic fertilizers to make those plants grow, okay, because they already have the, the nutrient cycling already there. That's important. Okay, so let's, here's my wonderful, beautiful soil food web chart. And this is the key to learning about the soil food web. Um, and it's awesome. So let's go through this um, level by level. Okay, so first we have our first trophic layer or level is photosynthesis. So here's our sun and it's coming down onto our, onto our green plants here. And it's photosynthesizing nutrients and the plants making nutrients and in the form of carbohydrates and simple sugars and those carbohydrates and simple sugars are going to go be stored in the root system of the plants so here are roots and those are our sugars attached to the roots here or in the roots okay and then from there still in our first trophic level that's the root the shoots and roots are in that level and also things like organic matter. So waste residues, the met metabolites from plants, animals, and microbes, uh, those are the dead and decaying matter of plants and animals. That's our first trophic level. If we don't have that, well, then we don't have a soil food web, okay? That is, this is the food here that's going to feed the levels um, after this. So the second trophic layer here, the level, I say layer, but I shouldn't, it's level. Uh, the second trophic level is your decomposers, your mutualists, your pathogens, parasites, and root feeders, okay? So here we have the organisms that come in and want to eat the plant shoots and roots. They want to eat that organic matter 
or they want to eat the exudates that the plants, shoots, and roots are giving off, those sugars. It's party food for them. That's like, come to the party, here's your pizza and, or whatever you like to eat, your, sh- your candy and whatnot. That's what those roots are sending out to, to the fungi, bacteria, and the nematodes. You're going to see nematodes in this group. It's only the root feeder nematodes because that's what they're eating is the roots of the plants. You don't really want a ton of root feeders in your soil. One or two is okay. <laughs> or seeing that in your micro, micro, microscope. In, in your views, um, you want more of the other type of nematodes, but we're going to get into that. Um, you're going to see fungi, hopefully, uh, mycorrhizal fungi and saprophytic fungi. Those are both really good types of fungi to have in your soil. They're going to be also um, taking up those ex- exudates from the plants, roots, and shoots, and taking up all that wonderful organic matter, that residue. Um, from the plants and animals and that decaying organic matter that's so important. Same with the bacteria here. The bacteria love organic matter. Okay, so they're going to be feeding on all of this stuff too. And we have all different types of bacteria as well. Um, And we're going to get into that in our second part of this um, PowerPoint talking about um, identification and morphology. So we will be talking about that. So that's our second trophic layer. Moving on to our third trophic level, we have our our shredders, our predators, and our grazers. And these guys are really important because then they come in and they eat the bacteria that has eaten the organic matter. They eat the fungi that is uh, eating the plants and organic matter, the plant roots and shoots. Uh, You have nematodes that are fungal feeders and bacterial feeders, um, and also also the arthropods. That those are our shredders. They shred up. They they um, shred up mat. They shred up whatever they're eating and um, uh, create more structure for the soil. So those are our arthropods or our shredders, and they love to eat fungi um, that have eaten the plants, roots, and shoots. (laughs) So we're um, it's kind of like one of those. Uh, songs that go on and on you have to say the same thing over and over that's what this is the soil food web it's just um like any other web you're going to see in nature uh or cycle so so nematodes arthropods protozoa so we have uh for the nematodes we have the fungal and bacterial feeders those are the ones that you want to see and they're going to have a different morphology than the predator uh predatory nematodes and the root feeder nematodes because you need to tell them them apart because you want the fungal and bacteria feeders in your soil. Protozoa, we have amoeba, uh, flagellates, and ciliates. And you're going to need to know the difference between those organisms as well. You're going to need to understand what they look like, understand what they do, and understand that there are some that you don't really want to see too much of in your soil. Okay, we're going to go into that a little bit later too. Then your fourth trophic le- level, your higher level predators. So now who's going to eat the protozoa, nematodes, arthropods? Well, these predatory nematodes are going to be eating other nematodes and protozoa. And the arthropods are going to be eating other arthropods. And then from there on, the fifth and highest trophic level are uh, larger animals uh, and birds. Okay. So that's the soil food web, but what does it do? Okay, so what, what does this, why is this happening? Why is this so important? Well, what happens here is quite amazing. Once you hit the second and third trophic layer, the protozoa, nematodes, and arthropods are eating the fungi and bacteria. Now, why can't the fungi and bacteria feed plants? Why can't they create nutrients for the plants? There are nutrients right there. Why can't they, if they're being eaten by protozoa and nematodes as nutrients, why can't the fungi and bacteria cycle back and sort of feed the the plants and roots and shoots as nutrients? Why can't the plant take up those nutrients? Because they're not plant available. They're in a totally different uh, makeup that the plant is unable to absorb and take up. It's not available to them yet until the protozoa, nematodes, and 
uh, arthropods actually eat the fungi and bacteria. And whatever these guys, the nematodes, protozoa, um, excrete is going to be what is going to become plant, plant available nutrients to the plant. So you need all of this entire soil food web to have plant available nutrients be in the soil. If any of these layers or levels are missing, you won't have that nutrient available. So this is very, very important. A cup of soil contains 200 billion bacteria, 100,000 meters of fungi, fungal hypha, protozoa, 20 million protozoa, 100,000 nematodes, 50,000 arthropods, and, well, earthworms are a little less than that because they're macro. I mean, there's more than them. You can see them with your naked eye, so there's just, they're not going to be as much as the microscopic organisms here. So that's pretty amazing, and that's in one cup of soil. So you can imagine there's more microorganisms in the, on our planet than there are humans or, an, or other ant types of animals. Okay, that's really important to know, see. Structure in your soil, holding nutrients. So what other things that bacteria does in our soil food web is they make a glue that holds small particles together uh, at like little bricks, and these are called aggregates. And the aggregates in the soil are going to help form those air pockets because they're going to all stick together, okay, instead of being like a wall of just sand, silt, and clay, they're actually sticking these particles together and forming these aggregates with their glue. Now the fungi is going to act like mortar to the bacteri bacterial bricks that stick together, those aggregates, and they're going to act like a netting, and they're going to hold in all those aggregates. Uh, and that's going to be like the... the the building walls, floors, and ceilings, and doors, uh, taking in nutrients, holding it, letting some go when needed, um, so it's it's contained and it's um, it takes care of itself. Um, uh, fungi condense the simple compounds in soil into e into ever more complex forms, and thus are most responsible for making humus. Fungi is very very important in your soil. <clears throat> Okay, so a healthy food web, if you have all the components of that soil food web in your soil, it's going to suppress diseases, meaning those good microorganisms in your soil are going to take over the bad microorganisms in the soil when you have good structure and you have those organisms there, and they're going to be competition for the bad guys. They're going to inhibit the bad guys. Um, and they're going to sometimes consume the bad guys. So no more pesticides need to be used if your soil food web is, in, is um, intact. Because of the way those aggregates are sticking together and because the fungi is holding them together like a net and because you have that structure in your soil, because you have the soil food web, um, it's, the soil is going to be able to retain the nutrients in the soil. It's going to prevent runoff and the leaching of nutrients. So when you have water running through soil that it is, doesn't have any structure to it and is not a nice sponge, doesn't have those aggregates and the fungi, fungi and the bacteria and the glues, um, it's going to take any nutrients that's actually in the dirt or soil and it's going to take it with it. So the water is going to come through, grab those nutrients and go. And so you have a lot of leaching of really important nutrients. So there goes any nutrients you have in your soil. The, the soil food web is going to help nutrients um, become available at rates that plants require. And it's going to eliminate any, any uh, use of fertilizer. You don't need it. Okay. Um, it's also going to lead to flavor and better nutrition in animals and humans. Because that nutrients is there in the soil, it's going to be taken up by the plant. And uh, fertilizers that are made in a laboratory cannot mimic or even come close to 
the plant available nutrients, the nutrients that uh, the soil food web uh, actually makes, they can't, they can't make that in a lab. They can't uh, take that, uh, that actual makeup and, and recreate it in a lab. It just can't happen. So you get very mediocre. So you get that fertilizer in there that's supposed to be, that's going to be taken up by the plant, but it, not at the same caliber and not at the same quality. So you're going to taste it in that food, just like the tomato I bought at the store that wasn't like what my father was growing in the garden. It was tasteless. It was bland. And if it's tasteless and bland, it's most likely lacking the nutritional value that it should have. Um, there's a there's a place uh, there there's a organization called the BFA. Okay, it's called it, it means uh, the Bionutrient Food Association, and there should be a chapter near you. Um, and their work is very important. What they're what they do is they um they work with ref they work with refractometers. And what refractometers do, um, it, we use it all the time. We use it all the time in, in, the vet, in veterinary medicine, and I'm sure human medicine uses it as well. We used to um, look at urine in animal urine under, in the a refractometer tool. So it takes a liquid and it looks at the solid content of it. If there are any solids in it that you can't see with your naked eye, but you take that uh, urine or liquid and you, you look at it under the refractometer and it shows you how many, how many solids are in there. Um, so we used to use it to diagnose kidney disease in animals, because uh, if you have a lot of solids in there, it usually me means that something's going wrong. And that's also probably, be, be, it's being done in, in human medicine as well. And so what they're using that for with looking at plants and nutritive value in plants is they're um, mashing up the plant and they're making it into a liquid. And then they're looking at that liquid under the refractometer and they're going to actually look for solids. They kind of want to see those solids, those nutrients uh, come uh, show up in the refractometer because it's going to show the difference of uh, plants that are grown in different ways. So a plant that is grown using, uh, it grown in dirt using fertilizers is going to have a different nutritive value than plants that are growing in a uh, healthy soil with an intact soil food web. It's really important work. So it's kind of cool. You can look it up uh, if you want to look up those, uh, that um, association. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Um, the the a healthy food web, uh, soil food web also decomposes toxins. So if you have anything sort of leaching into your or getting into your um, your fields or your garden plot that could be a toxin, a health a healthy food uh, soil food web will help decompose toxins. It's going to build soil structure, as we said, with those aggregates and organic matter and the whole soil food web together is going to form amazing soil structure, which is going to reduce water use, um, increase water holding capacity and, inc and increase root depth. If you have a lot of air, air circulating in your soil, if you have a lot of organic matter that's uh, nice and soft and fluffy and loamy and you have that soil structure, the plants that you are planting in that uh, material is going, the roots are going to be able to really take off and grow very, very deep and mine for the, for the nutrients they need. And also um, sort of uh, when the roots are go down really far, they're also going to attract the microorganisms to go just as far down into the soil. So then if your roots are going nice and deep in the soil, and your microorganisms and the soil food web is moving down those layers in the soil, then you're going to get soil structure that goes very, very deep. Um, I rarely have to water my garden, this, and even, even in drought situations, because the water holding capacity of, of good soil structure is amazing. I also don't have to worry about flooding, because it will uh, help drain water out that's not needed 
as well. So it works both ways. Oops, where are we going? Okay. So not just bacteria, not just fungi, but the whole food web is required in order to make plant available nutrients. So what happens if all or part of the, this, those beneficial organisms are killed? Um, and if they're, and when they're killed by tilling, they will get killed by tilling or disturbing the soil too often or too much. So tillage slices and dices and destroys those soil organisms. Pesticides, any sides, as I mentioned before, means killing. Um, so those pesticides, herbicides, fun fungicides, they're going to kill the microorganisms by destroying those, the membranes that the organisms are within and taking away all the water that's, uh, that is a part of the, the organism and that it causes them to die, lysis. So that organism, those organisms are going to die. They're either, they're either going to be completely wiped out, which is most of the time what happens, or they're going to go dormant, which it's something like, oh, they realize something's happening. We're getting sliced and diced. Some, this weird chemical, this, what is this in, in our soil? We don't like this. They'll go dormant. So go inside their casing, their little housing, and stay there uh, until the conditions are right again. Um, so they have that sort of, uh, survival mechanism. If they haven't been completely wiped out, then they'll go dormant. Uh, inorganic fertilizers are salts. And when you add salt or any form of salinity to, to soil, it's going to kill the soil food web. So... In essence, just spraying fertilizers and, and anything inorganic fertilizers and some even organic fertilizers, you're adding salts to your garden, to your soil, to your farm, to whatever you're using and growing food in. Uh, so that's another reason why you don't want to use fertilizers. They're very destructive, extremely destructive. Um, so how, after all of this... And maybe this is things that have happened in your, the way you're growing your food or you've seen or big farms are doing this and you're just wondering how do we get soil life back? So if you don't start out with a healthy plot of land that already has an intact soil food web, how do you get the, the life back in the soil? How do you fix it from it being um, treated with fertilizers or tilled? And just it just becomes a a deserted a, a, like a complete mess, just uh, sand or dirt. How do you get life back in dirt? So we'll go we'll go there. Oops, where did I go? Oops, where am I? Okay, sorry. <laughs> going on, going on. Um. So anyway, oh, actually that's. Um, we're going to actually end on this slide. <laughs> um, so we're, um, we are going to talk about how you get the life back in your soil. That's sort of going to be the third part of this, uh, PowerPoint. The next, uh, part, part two is going to be identifying those organisms using, using a microscope. And then we're going to go into how we get the life back in our soil. How do we get these organisms back in our soil? So thank you so much for joining me or watching this. Um, and I hope if you have any questions about the soil food web, uh, the components of the soil food web, or any questions on what uh, we went over today in this PowerPoint, please either contact me pr um, privately or you can post right under um, here in the comments because I'll be posting this to my Facebook page, the Our Ridge Homestead Facebook page. And please, um, share this with people that you think might be interested. Uh, the more we share this information, the better. So I'll see you. I'll see you next time with part two of this PowerPoint. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.